these uh, mountains that you just looked at look even bigger and more foreboding if you're out there amongst them. And uh, I imagine the Israelites got a great deal of comfort from God's presence in the clouds. As we saw tonight, there was a number of people who apparently thought Moses had perished up on top of the mountain and uh, decided that they wanted to go back to uh, Egypt. So anyway, uh, when God spoke to them from the mountaintop, when he spoke his Ten Commandments, with such power and well the earth shook it was just a very frightening experience for these people and uh, anyway <coughs> the thing that I would like all of you to remember is this in Psalms 89 34 God says my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my way. And he spoke his Ten Commandments to those people he wrote them in stone for us. And of course, Moses recorded them also on parchment uh, so that they would not be lost over the years. Now, some people took it upon themselves to alter these laws and uh, did away with the second one because they wanted to make statues of things and people. And uh, they divided the tenth and made two out of it so the number would be complete. The Bible speaks of someone who would think to change times and laws doesn't say they actually accomplished that. It just simply says that they think they changed times and laws. Christ, I think it's in Matthew 5, verse 18, somewhere thereabouts, he said, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, a lot of folks that want to get rid of want to get rid of the Ten Commandments say, well, it's all been fulfilled. They ignore the part that says, till heaven and earth pass. Okay? When you read a verse, you need to read and remember all of it. Now, when I first read Christ's comment about that, I thought to myself, well, if the law can be changed after, you know, this earth has been restored, then why can't it be changed now? And uh, I don't know if you have thoughts like this or not. <clears throat> I'm not real sure where they come from. You know, our minds basically can tell us when we're hungry or thirsty or cold or hot or some of those things. <clears throat> but I think all abstract type thinking is initiated from outside sources, either good or bad. And so anyway, thinking about that, praying about it, I remember um, in Matthew, let's see here, getting a little Franklin Bible out. <clears throat> Some people say this is cheating. <laughs> Bless their hearts if it is, I've been caught cheating. It says, the, uh, a lawyer asked Christ a question to try to trip him up. And if you recall, if you've read the Gospels, you know that this was one of their favorite uh, things to do. They tried to trip Christ up by asking him questions. And I had great admiration for the way he answered all of them. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that were God got him out of a real tight situation because nobody liked to pay taxes back then any better than we do today. But in this case, they said that a man 
Jewish law had to take the wife and raise the first child uh, basically for his brother. And this one died also without any uh, producing a child and on until all seven of them had died and then afterwards it said the woman. And then it asked the question, in the kingdom of heaven, who would have this woman to wife? And Christ answered, he said, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So he said, none of them would have her. So if this be the case, and the relationship, the marriage relationship that we have here no longer exists, I'm sure it will be replaced by something even better. Uh, that's hard to imagine, but I know God is able to do anything loves us, so uh, rest assured that he will improve upon everything. But anyway, the commandment, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, will no longer be needed in that situation. Is that not right? And so anyway, when we get to heaven, the Ten Commandments can be altered, and I suppose that they will perhaps revert back to uh, what Christ said when asked the question, which is the greatest of the commandments? And he said that you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. He said, on these two, hinge all of the law and the prophets. So anyway, until heaven and earth passes, until we or become residents of heaven in our Father's house. Christ said, in my Father's house are many mansions, and if it weren't so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you there. Well, we've been adopted too, so it is now our Father's house. And uh, when we get there, the Ten Commandments as we know them here, uh, will not be necessary. However, at least two of them are, are the two that uh, all of them hinge upon that Christ quoted will be necessary. But meanwhile, on this planet, we have to live up to those. That is what sin is measured by. Paul said, I would not have known sin except the commandment says, thou shalt not covet I believe. Anyway, some folks say, well, that's the only commandment that's any good anymore because Paul didn't quote the rest of them. And folks go through the Bible and they'll say, well, they didn't say all of that here, so that must mean it was done away with. Well, bless our hearts, if God repeated all the pertinent information every time the subject came up, uh, we would have to haul our Bible around freight train or something. And so when the law is referred to in the uh, manner that Paul referred to it, uh, it doesn't leave us to doubt which law is being referred to as the Ten Commandments. Now, folks, let me say this very clearly. I don't really care what you do. You know, I don't want to run your lives. But I do care whether or not you're lost. Christ died for you. God loves you. And what a horrible, horrible waste if you're lost. The song Darren sung tonight, they prayed, but their prayer was too late. We have the opportunity now, folks, to make a connection with God so that we will not ourselves in the situation where we are lost. There's a scripture that says the summer is ended, the harvest is finished, and we are not saved. That will be a horrifying experience, and I don't wish that upon anybody. But I also would want to share a heaven with all the inhabitants of this earth. I have gone into churches to do these programs, and I do them anywhere. All I require is that they invite me, that they pay my way there and back, and uh, that they take up a love offering. Now, I don't need that money. I make good money at home. I can pay for my archaeological activities out of that. But if I were sitting out there where you are, and 
and somebody was working on these things, I'd want to get in on it. So that's why we take up an offering. All right? And I guarantee you it will be put to good use. So anyway, we need to remember that the Ten Commandments are what sin is measured by. Many, many churches, most every one of them will tell you, oh, you just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. They like to quote this. This is what Paul and Silas said to the Roman prison commandant, the jailer. And that's true. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friends, you will be found of keeping his commandments. Because he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He says, if a man say unto me that he loves me and he does not keep my commandments, he is a liar. Right? And God has a, a list of things that are really an abomination lying lips are right up there on that list. Have you ever tried to do business with or associate with or do anything with a liar? There's just no way that it can work. No way. So anyway, now, another point here that I would like to make. God told Adam and Eve, don't eat of that fruit because if you do, you'll die. Satan came along and said, No, you won't. <coughs> God says, My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Christ said, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one till shall in no wise pass from the law. Satan comes along through his agents. And Eve became an agent of Satan after she ate the fruit. She took it, went to Adam. I wasn't there, so I don't really know what his true motive was. I imagine part of it was he didn't want to lose his wife, Eve. He decided he'd die with her. But anyway, Satan comes along today and says, Oh, you know, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You just call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or believe in Him and you'll get there. Well, one of the Bible's writers, Bible writers says even the devils believe and tremble. Okay, having made that point, I believe that we have arrived at the time for questions and answers. And folks, I say these things to you because I would very get the 